Our reference scripture this morning is Deuteronomy 33 and 27. The 33rd chapter of Deuteronomy is known as the Song of Moses. It records the blessings given by Moses to the tribes of Israel just before his death. Moses wrote the book of Deuteronomy to equip us for living a godly and holy life yes. in obedience to God. Yes. Obedience to God's word is motivated by love. When we love God, we want to obey him. We just want to do it. God's love equips us to do so. But we also need the power of the Holy Spirit working within us in order to obey him. Let God's love fill our hearts through his word and be equipped to obey everything he commands. Now, at the end of all our worship services, Pastor Monette blesses us and asks us if we are blessed. We respond, we are blessed to be a blessing to others. Then he gives us a charge. He says, now go out and bless somebody. Now, repetition can sometimes make the profound seem trivial. We repeat this every Sunday. It is profound, and we don't want it to be trivial. Do we accept this charge from our pastor and look for someone to bless, or do we quickly revert back to thoughts of what counterplay we can use to avenge our hurt feelings? Right. Now with the latter, we are neither a blessing to others nor to ourselves. Amen. For as the hymn says, a charge to keep I have, yes. a God to glorify, a never dying soul to save and fit it for the sky. Yeah. To be a blessing is to glorify God. Whatever we are engaging in, that we will give someone hope. The likeness of God should shine through us that others can see him and not us. Yeah. Satan can be defeated by the verbal testimony of believers. Revelations 12, 11 says, and they overcame him, talking about Satan, by the blood of the lamb, talking about Jesus' crucifixion, and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death, which means they did not hold on to their life unto, even unto death. How can we bless someone while holding on to traditions and 11th commandments that ostracize God's people? How can we see God and others who may be homeless, struggling in their family life, strung out with an addiction or just plain mean spirited when we look at them through our eyes instead of through God's? In Psalm 90, Moses wrote, teach us to number our days so that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Moses had experienced a su sufficient measure of God's anger. So when he tells us to number our days, he does not mean for us to just sit around counting the days until we die. He doesn't mean for us to sit around twiddling our thumbs, going to the refrigerator, sitting in front of the TV, 
marking off the calendar one more day before I die. That's not what he meant. What Moses wanted was for God to give him a new understanding of his life's meaning by teaching him to value the time God had given him for his eternal purposes. Calvary has been a blessing to the Trinity Garden community for over 80 years. Amen. Now Moses was around 80 when God called him to lead the Israelites out of slavery in Egypt. God prepared Moses for this assignment in what we might call a most unusual manner. You see, first he was abandoned by necessity by his birth family. Mm -hmm. Then he was adopted by Pharaoh's family, educated in the best schools and university. And then he kills an Egyptian as he claims his birth race. So then he retreats into the wilderness where he lives with his family and father-in-law Jethro, a priest who then gives him an education in life. And in the fullness of time, right. Pastor talked about that last Sunday, in the fullness of time, when he was fully prepared, God called him. Now understand, Moses was in Midian for 40 years. And while there, he continued to pray. He prayed for the Israelites, for God to bless them with their freedom. It is often said that it takes about 40 years to raise up a new generation. Calvary, we look up to God as Moses did and cry out, teach us to number our days. Don't let the blessing by the bus stop be just a catchy phrase, but let it describe an oasis where those who need sustenance may come in and find relief, where they can learn about Jesus Christ who died for our sins, who is our salvation, where they can come and find the information needed to make their lives better, well, help feed their families, be safe in the community they live in. We can be that oasis if equipped to do so to the glory of God. And when they do come, may they find the joy and love of Jesus within these sacred walls so that when they leave, they will know that they have been in God's presence. Amen. Prayers and blessings are the foundations on which the Judeo-Christian religions are built. Our prayers usually contain blessings for others. Last Saturday, Calvary hosted the most motivating town hall meeting that I have attended in this community. Pastor Manette and Dr. Miller put together a team of individuals who informed us about programs that are on operating or need to operate in this community that will allow for a better quality of life for the residents. Better food, shelter, clothing, education, transportation, and safety. Now, Calvary and other churches in this community have been praying for this for a long time. Calvary, we have always been the blessing by the bus stop. <laughs> During the journey from Egypt, Moses prayed for his people that God would bless them with the things they needed, with the food, clothing, and shelter. And being a priest, from the tribe of Levi. He also led them in praising God. He taught them to give them a Barak praise for their blessings. Now, as we know, Barak means to bless. So they blessed God 
as God bless them. We as believers and non-believers have been prayed over and prayed for and received countless blessings which have sustained us over the years. Now we would be wise to follow the example of Moses. So just what did Moses know? First, he knew that he was set apart and blessed by God. Do you know that we are set apart and blessed by God? If not, you know today. <laughs> he knew that God had chosen him to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. Do you know what your assignment is? If not, pray and ask God and he will reveal it to you. He knew to use his days wisely because death is an appointment. It's not an accident. He understood the wrath of God for being disobedient as well as his forgiveness and love. Moses knew who he was and what his assignment was. And for the most part of his life, he walked humbly with God. But he did let his anger and pride overcome him when he struck that rock to provide the water for his people. For in doing so, he brought glory to himself and not to God. You know, when I was a teenager and I really first realized the story about God being angry with Moses, I really didn't get it because as a teenager, I, I wasn't mad at Moses. If I had a bunch of people always complaining and every time I pray for them and go up on the mountain by myself, I'm 80 years old, climbing this mountain and come back down and y'all have lost your minds. And then you ask for stuff and I go up there and God gives it to you and I, and you still complain. I struck that rock too and I couldn't understand why in my teenage mind I couldn't understand why God was so angry with Moses to the point that he wouldn't let him into the promised land that was a problem for me for a while until I matured in age and in spirituality to understand that the act that Moses committed did not glorify God it was disobedient and all disobedience is sin. Anything that separates us from the love of God, anything that comes between us and God's forgiveness and his love is sin. So I understand that now my teenage mind could not. Now, knowing that his appointment with God is near, Moses offers blessings to the tribes of Israel to equip them to live good and prosperous lives in the promised land. Different events had shaped the complicatedness of each tribe. These tribes were complicated and had many parts to them. Now, Reuben, the tribe of Reuben, he was the oldest. He had sinned and lost his birthright. Simeon and Levi had been scattered throughout the tribes. Joseph's, Joseph's sons, Manasseh, had lost his birthright to his younger brother, Ephraim. Dan had become idolatrous and abandoned God. All of this Yet, Moses blessed each tribe, each one of him, he gave them a blessing. Mm -hmm. To the disinherited tribe of Reuben, Moses prayed for long life and prosperity. To Judah, a royal tribe, Moses prayed for victory and safe return in battle. To the tribe of Levi, his tribe, the set apart priestly tribe. Moses prayed for strength 
for their many ministries and for protection from their enemies. To the tribe of Benjamin, the beloved tribe, the youngest. Moses prayed that God would carry this tribe on his back and shelter them from danger. To Ephraim and Manasseh, Moses blessed them with precious things, plenty of water, good land, fruitful harvest, available timber and minerals from the hills and mountains. To Zebulun and Issachar, Moses prayed for blessings in every aspect of their lives, to be blessed coming out and to be blessed going in. To Gad, Moses blessed his tribe with bravery. To the tribe of Dan was considered at that time immature, a little whip, not yet full grown. <laughs> Moses prayed that the tribe of Dan would grow up to be a mighty lion. To Naphtali, Moses prayed for the fullness of God's blessings. For from the tribe of Naphtali came the priest Barak. All right. All right. And we also know now yes. that that means blessing. So to that tribe, Moses said, you have God's fullest blessings. But the last blessing was to the tribe of Asher. The blessing to Asher contains the focus verse for this morning. The name Asher means blessed. And to Asher, Moses prayed, may be the favorite of his brothers. May his feet not just be anointed with oil, but he wants them to be dipped in oil, completely covered in oil, not just on the top, but all through, saturated in, in oil, which implies the blessings of fertility and prosperity. Now, after Moses blesses the tribes of Israel, he ends it with praises to God. He gives God some of that good old Barak praise that we gave God this morning. He acknowledges that there is no other God like him. This God of ours rise on the heavens and on the clouds. And no matter what adversity we may encounter, the Lord our God will instantly be there with the power to deliver us from danger. God goes ahead of us to destroy our enemies and make our pathway straight and smooth. God has assured us of his safety. I want you to hear that. God has assured us not of the safety of just family, of your daddy, of your spouses, not of man's safety. God has assured us of his safety. His strong arms surround us with his protection. That's mighty good news. That's mighty good news. For man may get weak, get ill, stumble and fall, but God will never stumble and fall. His safety, his strong arms surround us and hold us. I want to ask you something. Have you ever been in a predicament and you prayed and you cried and you prayed and God spoke to you and said, my child, just lay down, just take a rest. And Pastor, as you rested, you could feel his arms surround you. You could feel his arms cradle you and rock you as you rested. 
That's the protection God guarantees us. Yes, the everlasting God is our place of safety and his arms will hold us up forever. Calvary, God will continue to bless us today as he has in the past. Since we are wonderfully and uniquely blessed by God, now, what do we do? Let us not be like the sons of Israel who after being brought to the promised land and blessed beyond measure, turn their backs on God, yeah. fell into idol worship and sinned against God. The prayers and blessings that we have received have equipped us to go out into the world and address the needs of God's creation, believers and non-believers alike. We must be the blessing by the bus stop for this community. We must be the voice for those who are unheard. We must be the lifeline to those who have lost their way. We must be the light in the lighthouse that leads others to God and to God alone. But while we're being a blessing, let us never forget to bless our families, to bless our children, to bless our grandchildren, and to bless the generations to come. For you see a charge to keep our hell, a God to glorify, a never dying soul to save and fitted for the sky. My blessing to you today, Calvary and friends, individually and collectively. Be blessed in your coming out and your going in. May God grant you his fullest of blessings. May others in your home and in the world see the spirit of God that lives in you and glorify him who is in heaven. Now be blessed. Thank you.